Welcome to another video from ExplainingComputers.com. This time it's very exciting indeed because I've just purchased this, a 10 terabyte Western Digital Black hard drive. And in this video we're going to be checking this out, installing it, doing some speed test things like that, and I'll also let you know why I purchased this particular drive and not a competitor model. But before all of that, I thought I should let you know where this drive is going to be fitted. Greetings! Here I am at my desk where I edit all of the explaining videos, and I'm not going to be fitting my new 10 terabyte drive into my video editing PC, which sits under the desk on the floor down here, because this PC has already got a Western Digital Black drive inside it, a 6 terabyte drive which is used for storing video files. It's also got an SSD as the boot drive and a second SSD as the scratch drive. Now what I'm going to be doing with this drive is putting it into this external hard drive enclosure over here. Which, if I give you a close-up of it, you can see that's had a drive installed in January 2015, a Western Digital Green 6 terabyte drive. I remember making a video about that, doesn't seem more than a year or two ago, it's quite a while, 2015. And what I use this drive for is twofold. Firstly, it's my first level of backup when I'm making videos. So once I've shot all the ProRes files which I edit into the videos and I put them onto the video editing PC, before I start editing, I make a copy onto this drive here, so I'm never editing files I haven't got a backup of, which is obviously a good thing to do. And then when I've finished making a film and I've got all the final files which have been generated from it, not as big as all the original shooting files, they all end up being copied to this drive. So that every single explaining computers and explaining the future video that's ever been made is stored, at least a copy is stored, there's backups in many other places as well, but a copy is stored on this drive. And this drive is generally offline, but I could always just reach down here, plug in the power adapter, turn it on, and get access to all of my archive. And I do that fairly frequently, and I never quite know what archive I'm going to use. So I need to have a drive big enough to take all those files. And right now it's just about full, which is why I've got a bigger drive to put into the enclosure. So you now know what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, so it's time to take this and the enclosure, put them together, and to get an upgraded external hard drive. Right, here we are back with our drive, all ready to be opened up, and if you're wondering why did I purchase this particular piece of storage hardware, I wanted a high performance 10 terabyte hard drive, which for Western Digital means one of their black range. The company mainly brand their hard drives in different colours, starting with their blue models. These are good desktop disks, but offer a maximum capacity of 8 terabytes, which ruled out a blue drive on this occasion. Blue drives also spin their platters at around 5,400 revolutions per minute, compared to 7,200 revolutions per minute for black drives. As we can see, this gives the black a higher read-write speed for applications like video editing, gaming, or just backing up files more rapidly. There are also red drives designed for network attached storage, purple and purple pro drives for continuous recording in video surveillance systems, and gold drives for enterprise storage. In addition, Western Digital also sells enterprise drives under the Ultrastar brand that was created by IBM in 1994, acquired by Hitachi in 2003, and purchased by Western Digital in 2012. So, you now know why I opted for a particular Western Digital model when they're black drives, but what about alternatives from other manufacturers? Well, I seriously considered purchasing either a Toshiba X300 or a Seagate Barracuda Pro. Both of these are designed as professional performance and gaming drives, just like the WD Black, and have the same 7200 RPM spindle speed. And in a 10 terabyte capacity, they also have an identical 256 megabytes of cache memory. However, whilst the warranty is five years for the WD Black and the Barracuda Pro, it's only three years for the Toshiba X300. And I always take warranties as a signal of build quality, as manufacturers only offer longer guarantees on hardware they don't expect to go wrong. 
At the time of making my purchase in the UK, the WD Black cost £292 compared to £265 for the Toshiba X300 and £280 for the Barracuda Pro. Meanwhile, in the US, the prices were $380, $350 and $380 respectively. For me, the cost difference was not enough to be a deciding factor, especially as reviews comparing drives of the same capacity have reported the Western Digital Black to be the fastest. I also know for certain that if the WD Black video drive in my PC fails, I can switch in this new drive and continue to edit videos with no issues. So let's now grab Stanley the knife and get this thing open. Very exciting opening a new drive. I think we just need to cut a piece of tape up here like this. It's always trickier than you think, or it might just be me. I can never get into boxes, as, as you're well aware, but hopefully this should let us in. How can I fail to get into a simple box quite easily on most occasions? Oh, it's one of these, isn't it? Of course, it's round the top and dear in me. Will that get us in? It will, finally, I've got in. It's gonna get to the drive. This could have been my longest video ever as I never got the drive out. Anyway, here we are. And this is the retail pack drive, which means it's got lots of good Packing. Oh dear, Stanley's fallen on the floor. Never mind, we've got the drive out. Here we are. Oh, I do like a new hard drive. Fantastic, isn't it? 10 terabytes of storage on a single device. That's amazing. And uh, we now need to get into the uh, anti static bag. So, of course, we bring in Mr. Scissors. Here he is. Let's uh, open up the anti static bag, cut it at the top so I can use it again, and hopefully that'll let us in. Yes, and Oh, excitement is too much for me. There we are, our 10 terabyte hard drive. That is, what an amazing piece of technology. And over here, I have got the enclosure in which we're going to fit the drive, but uh, I'm not going to fit it in there straight away because initially I want to take this drive, connect it up to my test rig and do some performance tests. Right, I've now temporarily connected the drive to a spare SATA port and a power lead in my test rig. And if you're wondering why it doesn't look exactly the same as its publicity photograph as we saw in the previous graphics, you'll have to ask Western Digital. Anyway, appearances aside, this is a new internal hard drive. So if we go across to the desktop for the PC to Windows 10 as we've got here, and we click on this PC, we'll discover the drive isn't listed. And this is because it first needs to be initialized and formatted. To do that, we need to go across to this PC and to right click and go to Manage to enter Computer Management. And we can then go down to Disk Management down there, where, as you can see, the computer automatically detects we've got a new disk which needs to be initialized. And we've got a choice of partition style, which can either be MBR, Master Boot Record, or GPT, the GUID partition table. And for a drive of over two terabyte capacity like this one, we should pick GPT as Windows suggests. And once we've done that, we can have a look down to the drive down there. There it is, it's appearing as disk one. And we can now right click and do a new simple volume to set up a partition. There we are, welcome to the new simple volume wizard. And next, we'll select all the space for one partition. Nice and straightforward here. We'll mount it as D, that's fine here. And I'm going to use the default NTFS file system, most sensible, we're going to use this drive with Windows. I'll give it a volume label. What should we call it? WD 10 TB, 10 terabyte, that sounds sensible to me. And what I'm now going to do is to remove the tick on quick format because this wizard is about to format the drive and I don't want to do the quick format, I want to do a full format. And the difference is a full format, although it will take a lot of time, will also scan for bad sectors, which is a good thing with a new drive. So we'll simply now select next to let things continue on. There we are, we're happy with that. We'll click on finish. The formatting process will start off and this will take, I would imagine, many hours on a drive of this size. So I'm going to leave the computer getting on with the format. I'm going to get a cup of tea and I'll see you in the next segment of the video. Greetings. It's now the next day and the full format has completed, as we can see, and everything is, is healthy, which is good. And I don't know exactly how long it took as it finished off overnight. 
but after four hours it was on 36%, so overall the full format took the best part of 12 hours. And if we close this down, we should hopefully see it now appears in this PC, it does. There it is, look for new drive, all formatted up. And I've also plugged in one of my Atomos SSD caddies that I shoot video on to use in a test. But before we get to that, I just want to run Crystal Dismark on this drive and see what it makes of the speed. You might remember from our previous graphics that Western Digital claim a sustained maximum data transfer rate of 263 megabytes a second with a 10 terabyte black drive. So let's see how close to that we can get in this test. And uh, there we are, it started off and we'll uh, speed on through until the end. And there we are, it's finished and wow, I am very impressed. The uh, headline figures here for copying large files, better than Western Digital's claim, 270 megabytes a second. So admittedly that's half the speed of an SSD, but it's very impressive at this cost per gigabyte for a hard drive. So let's do a test copying some files and down here I've opened up my Ninja SSD, I think it's over there, and I've selected a chunk of files totaling 12 and a half gigabytes, because we'll use that for our test, so I'll just uh, copy those files like that. Yes, I could control C, but you couldn't see me doing that. And let's go back to uh, this PC. Did I just close that down? I did, didn't I? Let's open up the drive, and we'll start off our test and do it like this. And there we are, it's copying. Let's have some more details, please. Wow, that's pretty impressive but we'll let it speed on through and get to the end of the test. And there we are, it's finished. And by the magic of filmmaking, I've kept the chart on the screen. And as we can see, we've got a transfer speed of about 126 megabytes a second. But that said, this was clearly a copy at two speeds, around 250 megabytes a second at about sort of 90 to 100 down here, which is an interesting result, particularly as it went back up again at the end. But for now, I think I'm going to move on, put the drive in its USB enclosure, and we'll do an extended copy test after that. Right, it's now time to fit the drive inside this, my Icybox USB 3, 3.5 inch drive enclosure. If I lift it up like this, you can probably just about see it says Icybox on the top in black letters on black, and you might have noticed I've already updated the label in anticipation of the new occupant. So to get inside it's nice and straightforward, I love the design of this enclosure, and we just have to take out one screw here like this, if I just take out that like that and don't lose it, hopefully put it down over there, and then in theory I just push at the back, and yes, the enclosure comes off like that, big piece of metal, and we can see the old drive inside and all I've got to do is to remove the screws on the sides. There we are, and that is completed. We can now just slide out the old drive. I still need to keep this to copy all the files from it, and it'll go into deep archive. But we now take our new Western Digital drive. I do like this new black drive. And which way around is it? It's this way around. That will slide onto the SATA connector. Let's be careful not to thump the drive on the desk as we are doing that, there it is connected. So we now just put in the screws. And uh, you might be thinking, Chris, why didn't you just buy a brand new external hard drive? I could have done that, could have bought a Western Digital one, but uh, I noticed the guarantees on the Western Digital black external hard drives were three years, not five for the drive here. And I am a control freak, I like to know exactly what's inside my enclosures. And I just like this enclosure, which is why I'm keeping it. So I'll just finish putting in the screws. There we are, everything seems to be secured or properly plugged in, that looks fine. So we can just put this back inside the case, it goes in this way around like that. Very good cooling in this case, very nice design as I said already, I like, I like this design very much. And so we now just need to line it up and put the other screw back in the top. And there we are, our upgrade of this enclosure is completed. And so I can now take the power supply which comes with it and plug it in the back. There's a nicer place to plug in in the back like that. And uh, we'll also plug in a USB 3 lead and we can now do an extended performance test.
So I've now connected the drive up to my test rig again, and I've run up the crystal disc mark as you can see. So uh, let's start off all the tests for a second time, see how it fares here. And before I ran this test, and indeed before I upgraded the drive, I also did a test on the previous Western Digital Green Drive in the IC Box enclosure and got read-write speeds of 115 and 114 megabytes a second. And I also tested out one of my Lacey Quadra drives, a five terabyte Quadra drive, and that gave a speed of about 157, 158 megabytes a second. So that gives us an idea of how fast other external hard drives tend to be. So let's now go back to the test with the Western Digital Black in our external enclosure and speed through to the end of the test. And here we are, it's finished, and I'm very pleased to see the results are even better than the Lacey D2 Quadra. Over 200 megabytes a second on an external USB hard drive. I've not seen a speed as high as that before, certainly not of any of the external USB drives I've been using. But as we saw previously, this is only part of the picture, so let's do a, a proper copy test. And I've once again got the same SSD caddy connected to the computer. It actually contains a Samsung Pro SSD. And here I've selected 40 files to a total of 60 gigabytes. So this will be a fair size copy, very representative of the type of backups I do with exactly the type of files I back up, so let's take a copy of that and open up this PC and open up our nice big and still empty drive that won't last forever. And let's do a paste and uh, see how long this takes, what the data transfer rates are. And there we are, an excellent final result, very consistent performance across about six minutes with a final data transfer rate of 171.1 megabytes a second. And I'm very pleased indeed to be able to get that type of data rate backing up large video files to an external hard disk drive. So I think I now need to get this drive back on my desk, get the data copied across to it from the previous green drive, which I'll do by connecting that drive using an eSATA connection on the back of the video editing PC, which after quite a few hours of copying will lead me back in the business of video production. So there we are. I've updated my on-desk external hard drive, so it's now got enough space for many more years of explaining computers and explaining the future videos. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh, <laughs>